Now that, my friends, is the sound of movement, and I'm going to give you an update on the micro mill project. So let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. This episode, I want to do a bit of a down and dirty update on the micro mill project because probably as you're seeing this, I'm going to be in the process of actually building my new shop slash house. So uh, uh, I've got a few of these videos queued up and I know this is one of the ones that had a pretty good interest. So you'll probably see a bit more of this. Well, not probably, I guarantee you, you'll see a bit more of this in the future. But I did want to share this with you guys as summer's coming up and if you wanted to tackle this project, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. So one of the things up front that I will say is I'm going to put a kit out on uh, Thingiverse with all the parts that I designed up to turn this into a CNC. And in this video, what I want to do is talk about what I did a little bit and how I went about doing it. And so if you're following along or want to pick one of these up and, and do the same, you can. So kind of a long story short, one of the first pieces I started with is I had to obviously connect just make sure everything's in frame here obviously a z a y and an x motor to make all this run and obviously this was never intended to and if you go back and i'll have the playlist as a card and probably as a link down below so you can kind of see this all torn apart in sort of my history with this machine so uh, with that, I had to actually use OpenSCAD. And the reason I used OpenSCAD is over top of Fusion is I felt a little bit more comfortable in designing for the oddities for this because each one of these plates were a little bit different, even though, for example, this plate and this plate should have been the same. It wasn't, you know, typical Chinese manufacturing. So it allowed me to uh, actually very precisely match these plates. And, and you could do it in Fusion, but I've just felt more comfortable in Open SCAN. So I'll put the STLs up there. The other thing that you might have remembered that I talked about is are these are push-pull rods. So in other words, they have to push and pull against something. So what I did is I made up these um, 3D printed sleeves to go on here that replace the aluminum knobs that, that spun on here that tensioned against this plate. Now, I didn't use the thrust bearings uh, like I was planning on, at least in this version, because of time. Uh, if, if I'm happy enough with the build, I will probably go back and actually on the other CNC machine um, some bearing holders for this. But really, I printed these out of PETG and it works just fine, um, you know, as you can see. So I do got some motion see I bumped that you can see the uh, Y turning um, I'm using the controller over there off camera I'll bring it on camera in a second and explain to you a little bit about that the other piece I actually used a collar that's intended to go to a spindle and then hold a, um, uh, a 1 8 inch chuck or about 3 millimeter not chuck but bit and uh, so I had to drill these out to accommodate these because these are four millimeter rods and this was a three millimeter hole, but they fit on the um, steppers perfectly. And so all this works pretty well. Now I mounted this together with um, uh, three inch number eight screws. I tapped into each one of these with an uh, uh, imperial number eight thread and it worked perfect. Why did I use number eight? Well, it was the right size and uh, I had a bunch of three inch so you know I just used what I had um, you know so anything that fits about the number eight size should work so you could do a metric version of this also now one of the things I ordered these motors from Banggood and I got them in and they had a real long um, shaft on them because I actually modeled them from my open build motors and the shaft link let me make sure I get this in here they were quite a bit longer so I had the motor, so what I just did is I, I uh, designed up uh, spacers to space them back uh, a bit. And uh, so that seems to work fine. So this really going to be dependent upon what type of motor you get. If you get the shorter shaft motor, you can actually use them without the spacers. If you get the longer ones, you can use them with the spacer. Now, I really would have liked to get ones where the shaft comes out the back, but those seem really expensive. If you guys know of a cheap place, that I can get with the shafts come out of the back, uh, you know, please let me know because I think I got these on Banggood. I want to say for less, for about 10 bucks a piece because I think it was sub 30 for all three motors, like 28 or 29 bucks shipped. 
and so I don't want to have a ton of money in this 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 is um, really I'm just trying to see what I can do with this and, and so far it's actually turning out pretty cool to be honest with you uh, I probably you know if I get serious with it we'll make some more mods like I was talking about with the thrust bearings but we'll see how that goes so anyways all this is working now for the control I'm gonna see if I can't bring this on get it in camera here I don't have this mounted up yet but this is the combo laser board I did a review on this board a while back um, I've got it set for CNC um, now the odd part is is it's got two power inputs and it seems to need power from both to actually work and drive the motors I'm not sure if everything's copacetic but the board itself all seems to work pretty well so I'm happy with that what I'm going to do is 3d print up a bracket that'll go on the back but I am super happy with this now I started out with uh, the CNC shield and for some reason I, I was having problems and I know this is sort of a good shield because this was running my old 2 watt laser in the past but for some reason it really wasn't driving these motors properly so I don't know if it was the setting on the ramps or what it was but I plugged this in and it just it worked so uh, I, I just went with this for right now I may go back and see what's the deal with that later or just buy another one I have had those go bad in the past so maybe that's just what happened so anyways um, it moves it all works I've ran it through a couple different paces I haven't cut anything yet I still have a little bit more cleanup I have to also calibrate garble for this uh, because it's moving in the wrong direction it's moving backwards I gotta fix that I also have to put dial indicators on here to figure out what my steps are because I have no idea on these rods uh, what they are and so what I do is I put a dial indicator, I tell it to move 10 millimeters, I see what it does, look at the math, and then adapt from there. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you're following along, it does work, it can be done, and this has been a really, really cool project. Um, you know, what I'm thinking about doing is, is actually using this maybe for education or something like that, because it, it will work for smaller parts, and I think it'd be pretty cool. And, um, you know, it's relatively safe, if you, if you know what I mean. You used to get your fingers in there, we'll cut your fingers off. But, um, you know, it's not like, you know, the bigger machines. Anyways, um, you know, so I, you could take this to like a school and demonstrate the concepts of CNC with a, you know, laptop in this machine. And, and that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. So, anyways, again, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, the bell button's there down there. Make sure you hit that. Make sure you're also a subscriber before you hit that bell button. So subscribe, then hit the bell button. If not, I put out regular content. If you got any questions, hit me up down below. I also have all the links to um, Thingiverse for the STLs for this guy. So you can have them for free. I also have links to the controller out there, as well as this unit if you want to try it and put it all together yourself. So let's we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we have more on this guy. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel. Oh, no.